Welcome to Great Debates and Updates on Hemo Malignancies. Uh, my name is Keith Stewart. I'm the Program Medical Director at Princess Margaret Cancer Centre in Toronto, uh, having just recently moved here from uh, Mayo Clinic. I want to start uh, today by talking about frontline therapy for transplant ineligible patients with multiple myeloma. And I, I wanted to start by uh, looking at a very uh, practical trial that was presented at the uh, ASH meeting, uh, which looked at uh, the issue of use of uh, lenalidomide and dexamethasone uh, continuously, which is our current practice for many patients with, who are more elderly with multiple myeloma, uh, versus the same strategy, but after nine cycles, uh, switching to a lower dose of lenalidomide. Uh, this is a rather simple, but I think uh, potentially practice changing trial that enrolled intermediate fit elderly patients. At uh, the bottom line of the two strategies were that they uh, were somewhat equivalent in terms of event-free survival, as I will show you. But in fact, the uh, early discontinuation uh, rate and the event-free survival uh, episodes were less in those patients who took lenalidomide dexamethasone for a fixed duration before switching to maintenance therapy. It's important to note that even with that new strategy, up to 9% of patients actually had to stop therapy within the first uh, two months of starting. So in this age group, uh, we are still uh, challenged by the toxicities of treatment. Uh, despite the fact that lenalidomide doses were lowered after nine cycles, we see here that there was no impact on progression-free survival and overall survival. So disease control uh, remained uh, uh, good. Uh, despite the fact that the, there was less side effects and less need to discontinue if you took the uh, lower dose of lenalidomide as maintenance. Also, in terms of response rate and depth of response, we see here in red the, disc the lowering of dose strategy, and in green the more traditional continued full dose strategy, and we see there's really, if anything, slightly better depth of response, presumably because patients who are intermediate fit elderly can stay on therapy longer. So the conclusions of this uh, first trial that we present for you today were that uh, these uh, newly diagnosed, uh, not very frail, but certainly not as healthy as our general population, uh, benefited from a reduction in lenalidomide dose over time. Uh, the event-free survival rate was better, efficacy was the same, uh, there was better tolerance and feasibility, although we still have some work to do in that space. And that this therefore perhaps suggests that this should be the strategy moving forward. Uh, the second trial I'll talk about, which you should be familiar with by now, was uh, a large swab clinical trial, which tried to add on top of lenalidomide dexamethasone uh, by using bortezomib, uh, the more commonly used uh, VRD regimen today. Uh, this was uh, an important trial because it established that the, the three-drug regimen uh, was superior, both in terms of progression-free and overall survival. Now, this didn't just include the elderly. It included uh, younger patients who were transplant uh, eligible, but who had deferred transplant or had some other reason uh, not to proceed. Uh, the median age was 63, but uh, note that 43% of patients were older than age 65, uh, there was more discontinuations when you used three drugs uh, versus two, uh, but there was no change in treatment-related deaths. So VRD has become one of the accepted gold standard therapies, uh, as you'll hear in, in the other talk today about treating the younger population. Uh, in terms of this issue of tolerability, our, the group at Massachusetts General uh, presented to us results of using RVD light. So this is starting in elderly patients at 15 milligrams of lenalidomide, uh, 1.3 milligrams per meter squared of bortezomib weekly, and 20 milligrams of dexamethasone weekly, and essentially show uh, very equivalent results, an overall response rate here of 86%, uh, VGPR are better 66%, so very uh, healthy results uh, for our, even our more elderly patients using the three-drug regimen. Safety signals were pretty much what you would expect with these drugs, uh, fatigue and peripheral neuropathy and neutropenia being most common. However, if you look at grade three events, uh, really there's very few uh, with perhaps neutropenia and uh, fatigue again being the, the main ones. Uh, 
So modified uh, RVD appears to be well-tolerated and highly effective treatment for older transplant ineligible newly diagnosed myeloma patients. After four cycles, the combination is very active and it can safely and effectively be administered in a community setting. There are alternatives uh, to the RVD regimen uh, use of ixazomib or IRD has also been shown uh, by our group at Mayo Clinic to be an effective strategy in this population if they're for some reason coming into the clinic for a, an injection is difficult. Uh, oral ixazomib could be used, although we do know it's not FDA approved for this indication at this time. Overall response rate being 92%. Um, grade 3 adverse events slightly different with uh, rash uh, also being uh, somewhat prominent. Uh, recent phase three trials have suggested that this may not be as effective, uh, may not be uh, uh, as effective as we'd hoped in this population, but certainly is an option. Uh, let's talk about daratumumab now, because this is obviously one of the new entrants into our therapeutic uh, decision tree. The Maya clinical trial, again, a very important study, looked at the addition of daratumumab to lenalidomide dexamethasone. And uh, as you probably know, this was uh, standard dosing, RD with the addition of daratumumab, again, at, uh, at fairly standard doses. Note that the creatinine clearance had to be greater than 30, but that therefore patients were included with some degree of renal failure. Uh, this is the, uh, one of the uh, early reports of activity of the three drug cocktail as showing a 71% 31, 30 month uh, progression free survival versus 56% in the control arm, which actually did very well with a median of 31.9 month, a median uh, progression free survival, which is actually quite good for that regimen, uh, suggesting these were uh, quite uh, patients doing quite well overall, uh, but DRD was clearly superior for progression free survival. This was true across most pre specified subgroups. Uh, including uh, sex, age, uh, uh, stage of disease, creatinine uh, clearance, and cytogenetic risk. Although you will note that for um, high-risk patients, there was some suggestion, at least in early studies, that that they may still um, that daratumumab wasn't contributing a lot to that patient population. I think further studies and longer follow-up have suggested that this is that was just a reflection of uh, small numbers and time of follow-up. Overall response rate, 93% versus 81%, uh, CR rate, 48 versus 25%, and minimal residual disease testing here on the right of the slide uh, was tripled in terms of at 10 to the minus five, at 24% versus 7%. Uh, a curious and interesting finding of this uh, study that we'll also see in a second uh, when we talk about uh, relapse is that the, uh, the attainment of MRD negativity with either regimen, RD alone or with DARA-RD, was clearly superior to those patients, even with three drugs who remained MRD positive. The point being that obtaining MRD negativity is the goal and how you get there may be less important. Overall survival at 28 months was still uh, immature and a lot of the curves appear to be separating slightly. There's no statistical uh, difference in this at this time. So the conclusions of the Maya trial were that the addition of daratumumab to lenalidomide dexamethasone reduced the risk of progression or death by 44%. It also improved the depth of response, including uh, highly stringent complete remission. And there was a threefold improvement in minimal residual disease negativity. The safety profile was uh, as expected for these drugs with no new safety signals identified. So the future, uh, this, so looking towards the future, we've shown you here that uh, RD alone for a very elderly or frail patient is still acceptable treatment with uh, dose reductions in lenalidomide, but that VRD or DARA-RD are uh, now um, probably acceptable standards for this uh, population of patients. And the question that is emerging is, should we add a fourth drug? To get us to that point, we'll talk about the Alcyon trial, which was, a, again, newly diagnosed patients, a somewhat similar uh, entrance criteria that we've seen before. Quite a large study with 706 patients, mostly conducted in Europe. 
Uh, bortezomib, malfilamprenazone, considered the standard of care in many countries uh, around the world. It was uh, then modified to include daratumumab. After 10 cycles, uh, daratumumab was continued, uh, but BMP was discontinued. The Progression-free survival is shown here, and again, a very dramatic difference uh, when daratumumab is added to VMP uh, with at 30 months, 60% uh, median progression-free survival was not reached, 60% were still in remission versus 28%, the median progression-free survival of 19 months for VMP, the hazard ratio of 0.43. Overall, this translates into a 57% reduction in the risk of progression or death, and patients receiving the four drug cocktail. Again, this was uh, across all uh, pre specified subgroups, a very significant addition and improvement, except again, perhaps for high risk disease, where uh, because of small numbers, uh, this crosses the boundary. <coughs> uh, overall response rates were uh, significantly higher 91% versus 74%. And again, we see this uh, complete remission rate going from 25% to 45%. MRD negativity from 7 to 27%. But again, we see this phenomenon here of uh, the three drug or four drug cocktail being somewhat equivalent if the patient can obtain MRD negativity at 10 to the minus five uh, sensitivity. Overall survival in this case uh, did uh, reach significance that uh, 75 versus 62% of patients alive after 42 months at the hazard ratio of 0.6, a 40% reduction in the risk of death using the four drug cocktail. So the conclusions here that adding daratumumab to three drugs significantly improved progression free survival, significant risk of uh, decreasing risk of progression or death, um, deep and durable responses, and based on uh, PFS2 results, it looks like longer survival outcomes are projected for the four drug versus the three drug cocktail. Again, uh, safety signals would be as expected, although we uh, do have to pay attention, I think, to the instance of infection. Uh, grade three, four infections are quite common as one starts to layer on these very effective and immunosuppressant drugs. So uh, with both Mas uh, Maya and Casapia behind us, these do suggest that the addition of daratumumab to the standard of care regimen in the elderly patients is something that should be explored. But again, I would perhaps just tinge that with a little bit of caution that in the elderly patients particularly, we're going to have to be very mindful of the risk of um, infection and infection management being very uh, carefully uh, looked after. Uh, another option that's been published is the use of exazomib RD, DARA, again, uh, very high response rates. And uh, when cost becomes a issue in many countries and we start to worry more about the cumulative expense of treatment, uh, one uh, cheaper option perhaps, but still quite effective would be the CYBOR-D regimen combined with daratumumab. And we see here again that um, a uh, very respectable median uh, follow-up and median uh, progression-free survival not being reached either in the non-transplant or in the transplant population. So we need further follow-up of this regimen uh, to see about durability, but it's certainly a, a, an improvement, I, I would suspect, over CYBOR-D alone. At Mayo Clinic, we've, uh, this is slightly out of date now, but we have, uh, you will see, we've begun to adopt daratumumab uh, when I was still there into the lower risk patients uh, with our standard being VRD for 12 months, followed by LEN maintenance or daratumumab, lenalidomide, dexamethasone uh, as an emerging alternative as insurance and uh, funding allows. Uh, for frail patients, lenalidomide, dexamethasone is still very acceptable and the very elderly. In high risk patients, I think there was a little bit of concern that daratumumab hadn't uh, managed to improve much on lenalidomide dexamethasone initially. And so VRD was still being recommended because of the benefits of a proteasome inhibitor. But I think as we see the Casapia results and as the maturity of Maya advances, I think it'd be very acceptable in the high risk patient population to consider a daratumumab containing regimen as well. So in summary, uh, RD, I'll just advance all these because they come up 
Um, so in summary, VRD has an overall survival benefit in the non stem cell transplant uh, group of patients. A VRD light or RD followed by lower dose maintenance for, of lenalidomide is a very reasonable uh, proposition in the more frail patient. IRD is not approved, but if you need an all oral option, it could be considered. RD DARA is safe and efficacious. Uh, we're looking at extending into quadruplet inductions, uh, particularly in the younger patient, uh, but maybe tentatively in the more fit elderly but with, you have to be very mindful of infection risk and make sure vaccinations and antibiotic prophylaxis are incorporated. And VMP DARA is an active and uh, FDA approved regimen, but of course, since we've moved off of uh, malflan and prednisone a bit in the USA is perhaps not our first choice. So thank you for your attention.